Good morning, everybody. Hope everybody is well. Happy Tuesday for those that are here live. Summer is barreling on. It's almost July. July 4th is right around the corner for the Americans. For everybody else, it's also July 4th. It just means a little bit more to us, I think. Only because it's the beginning of summer, July 4th. July 4th weekend, independence. A lot there. We've been talking about this concept of what it's like to always be able to learn something from something. This is where we ended off yesterday. This is the quote from Kobe Bryant that really gives insight to a lot of what we're trying to accomplish here together. When the world in front of us if you will, ends, then you need a result to feel good about yourself. When you're at the end of something, a semester, a job, um, a, a competition, something, what we look for in the validation of the work that we're doing is success. So if you look back at your life and you see things that were unsuccessful, you may feel bad about them. You may look back at your high school or college career, or you may look back at your youth and see all the things you did wrong and see them as failures. This happens when people go through challenges. I was on the phone yesterday with somebody who's going through a challenge And a lot of the challenge that he's going through really is in comparison to other people. Other people that are his age are, have something that he doesn't have. Now he has his own personal challenge, but that personal challenge is exacerbated because the people around him don't have that challenge. It's one thing if a person is looking for their soulmate, let's say. But if you're looking for your soulmate in the context of your friends who found their soulmate, it exacerbates the challenge of looking for your soulmate. When you're in a situation where either you're competing or you look at it and say, wow, I've got, you know, this season and I didn't achieve my goals this season and I didn't win the championship. When you live in a world where Either the people next to you that are have something you don't have or what's in front of you is a clear win or loss. When you're surrounded by results, it's easy to get lost in feeling bad about yourself if you don't achieve the results that society wants of you. And so you live in a space of hoping to win or being scared of losing. And this applies not just for a road it could it could be every moment you stand before somebody to say something you could you're you want to come across good you want to sound intelligent you are wearing something you want to you know you want to look good whatever it is whatever results we're all after the reason why we are fixated on the result is because there's some end There's some finite competition. There's some finite end to the road that's in front of us. Where we started going yesterday is that only really applies if you stop playing after the thing is over. If you have an opportunity, remember in my career, there was an opportunity that I really missed. There's plenty of them, but there's one in particular that I just can't shake whatever it was, someone gave me a chance to run something and I didn't take it, even though I should have, for a whole variety of reasons that in, in hindsight were, were not great. I had a great opportunity, you know, years ago to do something very hard. And either I was, you know, not sure I could do it. I didn't sure I was the right guy, whatever it was. I was hedging my bets. I wasn't sure if I can trust the person on top. There's a whole re- bunch of reasons why 
I didn't jump on it. But even so, I look back at that moment and say to myself, how did you mess this up? How did you miss that? How did you not see that this would have done so much for you career-wise? You would have learned so much. You would have had so much opportunity. I mean, it's how could you have, how could you have failed? And the answer is if that, I don't even want to get into it because who knows who knows who? Like, you know, I don't know. I don't know. But if I look back at that particular opportunity, I may never get that again. I don't know if I will. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not in that particular industry. And if I stop playing the game of life, then I'm going to look back at a failure and not be able to get over it. And it'll always be a failure. It'll always have that stain. People have that growing up. I speak to people all the time that speak to me about challenges in their, in their upbringing. And now they're not children anymore. People, I speak to, this happens a lot. People feel like their childhood was robbed. They didn't have the childhood that other people had, let's say. Maybe they didn't have enough resources so they had to go to work very early or they didn't have the love and support that they wanted or whatever. People didn't have the family dynamics that they wanted when they wanted it. There's a lot of stuff that people go through in life. And as they graduate out of periods of time in their lives, they look back and say, I don't think I've been, I failed there or I was taken from me. I was talking to someone recently who, who was explaining to me how um, when he was young, his parents moved right in the middle of his elementary school years. And for whatever reason, the kids in his classroom that he, of the school he went to were just really mean kids and they tortured him. The, the man's in his 40s. He remembers it like it was yesterday. Those few years in elementary school where his youth, if you will, was challenged by kids his age not accepting him. You can look back in your life and see all the challenges that you had. You can look back in your life and see all the failures. I remember when I was in high school, not that this really matters in life, but I remember we had our big games and we lost in the championship. I remember it. It was called the Sacken Tournament. Now, I don't remember it anymore, but for a lot of years, it stuck with me. Every play, what we could have done better, how we could have, and this, this is, it's, it sounds ridiculous, but we all have it. Had I gone to camp, had I not gone to camp, had I said yes to that person, I said no to that person. Had I taken that job, had I not taken that job? Why did I do that for? Why didn't I do that for? You see, there's so many parts of, there's so many results in our lives that go against us. There's so many times where our, expert, our expectations don't meet what happened and they're all littered behind us. And if you look back, there are lots of moments that we look at potentially and could be disappointed in. Because when you live in the world of results, you are guaranteeing disappointment because the results can never always go in your favor. Not if you're, not if you're an aspiring person. Because even if you get a result you want, you're aspiring for more results. And that's not how you win. You win by failure. You win by pushing yourself. And so, so much of our confidence, 
so much of our self-affection, so much of our self-perception could be built in to the lack of results that we accomplished throughout our lives. Unless, unless we realize that I'm not done living and I'm not done playing. And if I'm still standing, that means that those negative results didn't knock me down. That means I'm still in the game. You ever watch, I know some of you, I don't know if you do, I was talking to somebody yesterday and they were telling me like, you know, they were telling me how much I love football. I guess they hear a couple of videos. So I happen to love football. If you ever watch the football game, of which I don't watch full football games, just for the record, I can't sit through one. It's too hard for me. I, I can only watch highlights. I don't have the patience, to be honest. But if you ever watched the highlights or watched a football game, if you haven't, it's okay. I'll explain what I'm saying. So don't worry about it. For the non-sports fans, we, you know, we'll interpret. At the end of each offensive set, quarterbacks go sit on this bench and, and then what happens is this is all a new thing their coordinators their offensive coordinators the people that are helping create the plays come over to them with these microsoft surface pads ipads and they sit for the during when the team when their team's on defense they sit and they're looking at the and 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 everyone's like, what are they looking at? And what's happening is is in between plays, when they are on defense, the offense, the quarterback, is watching what happened last set, and his coach is showing him. They have everything videotaped, and he's showing him. You see what these guys are doing. You see when they're coming up the line, how they're going to sack you. So the next time you go on the field and you see those two guys move like this, this is where they're going. And each break, each time he gets out of the, uh, off the field, he sits down with the coach and the coach takes out an iPad. And the iPad is the videotape of the game that he just played in five minutes earlier but it's showing him different parts of the field that he may not have seen. So that he can learn one nuance, two nuances. So when he gets back on the field, he now has more information so that he sees a field full of multiple people moving, but he understands and recognizes patterns. That's what makes him great. You know when they stop showing him the video the, on the bench? When the game is over. You know when they stop showing him videos at all? When his career is over. He's watching videos in the middle of the game during the game. And when the game is over, they stop bringing out the iPad. And now you got to watch it in the booth. You got to watch it back in, 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 uh, in headquarters. But you're only watching it in headquarters for the next game. And when the season's over, you're only watching it if your career is going. As soon as you retire, they don't show you any more iPads. No one has time for that. No one has time to sit down with clips and show you stuff if you're retiring. That's what it means to live an effort-based life. You don't look back at a bad result and hang your head. You watch the videotape so that you learn what to do because you're still in the game. You don't look back at your life, recent or distant, and hang your head because the results didn't go your way. We're still in the game. There's still plenty of plays left to play. And whether we realize it or don't realize it, a lot of what's in front of us 
is just repeats of what was behind us. The names are different. The circumstances are different. It's the same stuff. A lot of what's in front of us are repeats of what was behind us. And if we look back and hang our heads because the results don't work, when we look forward, we will have no new information to get better. And worse, we're going to perpetuate the same mistakes. So for those people that say, my childhood didn't work out in my favor, they are at a higher risk to perpetuate that same problem to their children or to swing the other way. I know somebody who had a very challenging childhood financially. His kids are spoiled like you cannot believe. To his, I'm not saying it. I don't even know his kids. I don't, I don't know his children. He's telling it to me. He's now grappling with the spoiling of his own children. Because he says in his words, I didn't have it. So the pendulum swings. When you look back at things that bothered you, or when you look back at results that didn't work out, in order to learn principles, or to learn something, now you are uniquely situated to look forward and say, wait, I've seen this before. It was different. I was the kid then. It was different. I was playing a sport then. It was different. I was, you know, just starting my career then. It was different. It was in my marriage. It was different. It was with my kid. The circumstances were different, but the principles seem fairly similar here. I'm making the same mistakes every single year. They're just perpetuating themselves in different circumstances, but they're the same mistakes. I got to watch the videotape. I'm still playing in the game. And if I'm still standing, that means I can make the next play better. And maybe, just maybe, everything I learned behind me is only preparing me for the next decade of my life. How do we know? How do we know if maybe the next year is the most important year of our lives? Maybe. Maybe in in, in the future is so much more valuable than in the past. How do we know? We don't know what tomorrow brings. We don't know where the world is going. We just saw it last year. I was, my rabbi, uh, you know, Ari Weinberger would, would always say, um, well, I'll say it like this. When we went into lockdown, a lot of play, a lot of synagogues just crumbled. Ours didn't. Our, ours got stronger, much stronger. Our rabbi, God bless him, got online, started giving classes. Our shul bound together as much as possible. And as soon as they opened those doors, pretty much, it's been packed ever since. And I remember sitting with somebody and he's saying to me, that they didn't come for nothing. The rabbi has been preparing us to walk with faith for so many years. Nobody knew that this would be the challenge of our decade. But when we as a community faced the, the COVID, we were prepared for it. He prepared us for years through his sermons and classes for years, we knew exactly where to go. We knew exactly how to respond from a faith perspective. All the things that he taught us, 
who would have thought it would have came out in 2019, 20 with some incredible virus that's taken over the whole world. Nobody would have thought that. Who knows what's in front of us? Who knows the opportunities that will present themselves to give us a certain level of life satisfaction that we couldn't even dream of? Who knows if all the stuff that we went through isn't to teach us the patterns of life so we can get better tomorrow? We're still in the game. The game may have shifted, but we're still playing. And when we look at our failures, when we look at results as just indicators of principles and ideas, then we live in the world of effort. We live in the inner world and we are just always growing and getting smarter and more insightful and wiser. We're always refining our perspective so that tomorrow's a little bit better. And maybe just maybe it's not for us. Maybe it's for somebody around us that's going to get the benefit of our experience. But we have to keep that perspective. We have to keep that perspective. That if I'm around today, that means I can make today better. That means what happened yesterday is just going to teach me what I can do today. Okay, we'll talk about this. All right, everybody, think about this today. Try to look around in your day and see what you learned yesterday that can make you a little bit smarter today. Start looking at our failures as the greatest teachers of success. All right, have an amazing day. With God's help, I cannot wait to see you again tomorrow. Have a great day.